But you know, we don't have things here in the in, in the UK like state taxes. You know the way in in America you have state tax to buy something in the shop. Uh -huh. Here, any tax is included in the price that you see. Um, you know, so if you see a sweater and it's twenty pounds, that the tax is included in that. But in some states in the U.S., you'll see it. You know, um, a sweater and it's twenty dollars, and then you get to the till and it's like twenty dollars ninety-five because they add on the state tax. Well, we don't have that here, but you can imagine my surprise when that used to happen to me when I'd be in the states and I'd be going, "Oh, but it says it's this amount." <laughs> uh, one of the uh, one of the things you have to know about people here in Northern Ireland, uh, you guys, you folks have a, a term and it's tight with a buck. Yes. So people here in Northern Ireland are very careful with money, generally. Yep. And we like to get value for money. And uh, you will f it's quite often you'll find somebody that, you know, they'll see something priced at something in one shop and then to save two pence, they'll go to another shop, they'll go, I'm not paying that. <laughs> and they'll go to the other shop and buy something. Right. And another thing, and I find this really... I find this really quite endearing and funny and peculiar about my people here in Northern Ireland. My people. They, so, so I spent most of my life working as an actor, okay? So I'm semi-retired from that now. Well, three quarters retired from that. But I was out in a show in New York about nine years ago. And one of my fellow cast members was walking up the street. We were living uh, west of 51st Street at night. And Pauline's walking up the street and it's a lovely September day in New York and she's wearing this lovely new top and I said, Pauline, that's a beautiful new top you've got on. She says, I know Richard, I got that for five dollars. <laughs> and here's the thing that we do, we have to tell you the price. <laughs> so if I was wearing a lovely suit, right, and you, you, might, you might think, oh, that's a beautiful suit. He's wearing an Armani suit or something. And you might say, oh, that's a gorgeous suit. Is that Armani? And I'll go, no, I got that for 50 pounds and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we can't let people think that what we're wearing is really, really expensive. It's like a, it's another little, little tick that we have. We have to tell you that we've got a bargain. <laughs> but I think it's absolutely hilarious because in other parts of the world, people will just shut their big mouths and let people think, oh, she's wearing a really fantastic design designer dress or he's wearing a fantastic designer suit but we have to tell you where we got it and how little we paid for it. Well, I, think, that, I think it's hilarious. Is that a characteristic of all Irish would you say? Um, that you tend to have that? I'm not sure. I definitely know it's a characteristic of the Northern Irish people. Oh, okay. We're very like that. <laughs> <laughs> Scottish. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> oh, look at this. So you'll see some lovely new houses are built on this road as well here on the Arts Peninsula and I think these people have the right idea. They probably bought a patch of land and built a lovely house. Yeah. So they're around 25 miles. In English for just a few minutes. For just just for a minute. Say that again, sorry? Break out into American English just for a minute. Break out into American English? What do you mean? Oh, like speaking an American accent? Is that what you mean? Like that? Yeah, okay. Uh, so, I, you know, I worked extensively in uh, an American accent, and uh, when I was working in New York, people actually thought I was a local actor, and I'd go, no, I'm actually from Belfast. they go, no, you're not from Belfast. And I'd go, yeah, I am. So, yeah, so I spoke, uh, I worked a lot in, in American accents. Did you ever do there you Southern? Go. Did you do Southern <laughs> or mostly? You mean York? like talk like band? <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> uh, that was helped by my sister. She was the one who that was helped by my sister who, who lived in Texas, and my sister had an accent like mine, my Northern Irish accent. But she was a nurse there for over 30 years before she died, and she used to say things like, she used to yell at the kids, y'all better get your asses down here before I whip your ass. <laughs> Father, you're from Belfast? What are you talking about? <laughs> anyway. So we've just come through a little... <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we've, we've available for uh, bookings. Um, <laughs>
<laughs> we've just gone through a little village called um, Kirkcubbin, which was very typical of those little Irish villages. You know, it's just one main street with lots of amenities, amenities on it, and then little streets off it where people would live. And that used to be a place where back in the 1830s, 40s and 50s, that's where lots of those Victorian bonnets were made in Kirkcubbin, and then they were exported all around the place. of a windmill on that hill there on your right hand side. So they used to call the Arts Peninsula Little Amsterdam. There were a number of windmills along this the particular peninsula. There's the famous Jesus Saves Rock. The famous Jesus Saves Rock, yes. It's got and it's a, it's a what is it? Is it a Rosh Matone or something, isn't it? Yeah. Rally. If you look on the right hand side there, there's some lovely swans. So Grey Abbey itself, it's a tiny little village. There's a number of antique shops in it and of course some coffee shops. Little cafes. The Abbey itself, which is at the back of the little village, states from 1193, it's 830 years old. It's been in the ruins since the 1700s. But right behind it, there's a stately home called Rosemount House. And it's owned by the Montgomery family who own a lot of this land. Rosemount House dates from the 1760s. And it's right in there behind those trees. Trust me, it is there. And there's another old telephone box there. It'll be on your right hand side. You know, we see a lot of people walking dogs. Would you say that most people have pets and dogs? <laughs> oh, I guess, I guess they'll be the same as in it's America. America. Yeah, uh, it's, I mean, lots of people have dogs, lots of people don't. Lots yeah. of people have cats, lots I of people don't. I think we would just see them because they're out walking. They're out walking, yes. All those doggies are taking their mummies and daddies out for a walk. <laughs> yes. To make sure they're well exercised. <laughs> I have to take my doggy out for a walk when I get home. Yeah, there you go. And he'll be upset. Because he's been minding the house all day. Yeah. He wants to get out. They gave it over to the National Trust, but that the agreement was that they, the trust could open about three quarters of the place to the, the public, but that they would always have a place to live there in perpetuity. And currently Lady Rose is 79, so I was there a couple of days ago, and a very good friend of mine is actually works for Lady Rose. So I went into the private part of the hut here. So this is the tropical part of Northern Ireland that you're in. <laughs> and this little area here is known as Cunningburn on your left hand side. It's got picnic tables, a little bay, a little stony beach. Yacht Club here, Newton Art Sailing Club. And you'll see that I said Newton Arts, it's actually Newton Arts, but whenever we speak normally, <laughs> it's Newton Arts. And we came past Newton Arts earlier on, it was the place that had the lovely tower, which I'll tell you a little bit more about as we get closer to it. <coughs>
So Scrabble Tower, which we can see clearly now on the left hand side, that sits on top of Scrabble Hill, about 500 feet tall. That is a volcanic plug and then the tower itself is 140 feet tall. And it was built as a memorial to the Marquis of Londonderry, the third Marquis of Londonderry, who was, we're great at writing religious messages on rocks by the way, as you can see there on the left hand side. Um, he was the man who owned Mount Stuart. And when he died, it was decided that a memorial should be built to him. And so money was raised to build what was originally known as the London Derry Memorial here. But it's actually Scrabble Tower now. Scrabble, S-C-R-A-B-O. It offers the most commanding views of Strangford Loch and also most of County Down from the top of that hill there. It was built in 1857. They originally planned to make another four smaller towers linked by a wall, but they ran out of money. So we're left with Scrabble Tower as it is now. It's in the Scottish baronial style. There are 122 steps that take you to the top of it. It's not always open. The tower itself, the grounds are, but the tower itself is not always open to the public. But if you are there on one of the days when it is, you can walk up the entire 122 steps and go to the top where there's a viewing platform. And if it's a clear day, once again, you can see as far as Scotland. And interestingly enough, it was actually inhabited until 1966. And there were two sisters at that point who lived inside the tower and they used to operate tea rooms from it. And I think, you know, you got a little glimpse of it earlier today, but as we come closer to it, you will see that it's a rather splendid Gothic style building. It looks to me as if it should be in some kind of spooky Gothic novel. Should be letting her hair down from the top of it. And there's a golf course right up there. Now Northern Ireland has got some of the world's... And they say that the golf courses themselves are very difficult. And if you couple that with our sometimes rather inclement and unpredictable weather, they say that if, the, if a golfer can manage those two things, they can play anywhere. And so we seem to have a habit of breeding top world-class players. And of course, the current one is Mr. Rory McIlroy. Yes. And of course, we hosted the Open here in Northern Ireland in 2019. And we're going to host it again in 2025. So and we're just coming into Newton Arts now. Richard, yep. for the tower, you always think of the uh, square footage as you walk in. It's very small. Is it? Is the base large where they could have tea? You said the girls... The, uh, the tea room was on the first floor, I believe. Uh -huh. So it's not actually that large when you're inside it. Yeah. Maybe like the three tables three or four tables exactly yeah. exactly have you been there no. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's exactly the kind of dimensions yes uh, yeah. so the center of newton arts is right on in front of us here at the front of the coach there's a little airfield in newton arts as well that's where you would go to take your private air lessons if you want to become a private pilot uh, yeah. you know if you're going to fly your little cessnas or your pipers or whatever they are um, We've got two main airports in Northern Ireland. The city airport, which is really close to where you are uh, docked. You might have seen landing from there th this morning. And then there's the international airport, which is around 20 miles from Belfast. Both of those airports are just under an hour flight from London. So we're saying goodbye to Strangford Loch now on the left-hand side as we move inland and go towards Belfast. Tim Hortons. We have Tim Hortons. Yeah, they're a Canadian company. They only opened here about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And that tower is supposed to be a monument to the guy that... Yes, it's a, a guide to... Uh, a monument to... The, 
the Marcos, the third Marcos of London, Derry, who owned Martin Martin Stewart. That's exactly right. Well, I think it's fantastic. I'm, I'm borderline obsessed with it. Yeah. <coughs> and I'll tell you a funny story about it. My friend's father, who was an American called Ralph Smith, he used to go up there and play golf. And he actually reversed his car wrong, and he ended up hanging from his seatbelt, hanging off the uh, hill. And he did that not once, but twice. My friend said to me, you'll never guess what my father's done again. I said, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. And you know what? He was in his 80s, and he was like completely unscathed. It didn't, it was like water off a duck's back. Oh, no. I think it was probably like, I think he was trying to create a new sport. <laughs> so there you go, get a really good view of Scrabble Tower now. And I have to tell you that that is actually my dog's kingdom. He owns there. So I have a little corgi cross with a Jack Russell. He's a rescue dog. And whenever, uh, whenever we, I got him when he was 12 weeks old. And uh, I wanted to call him Trevor because I like whenever dogs are called human names. So for example, my friend Marina has a dog, and Jack Russell as well. And Jack, her Jack Russell is called Gary. And she used to come in and say, oh, Gary kept me awake all last night. And you'd be thinking, oh, well, that's her child, you know, when you've been sick, but it was the dog. So I wanted to call the doggy Trevor, but he was already answering to his name that he'd been given whenever he was uh, taken into care. And uh, his name is Chuck. Chuck? Yeah, and he, and he is a Chuck. He's cool. So that's his kingdom up there. this morning, weren't we? I think Did so. we talk about KFC? No, we didn't, as we went through Cumber. KFC, we've got KFC, Burger King, etc. Yeah. TK Maxx is TJ Maxx. It's just got a different name. Asda, that you would have seen there, in the green lettering, that's owned by Walmart. Okay. We've got Burger King, McDonald's, KFC, Pizza Hut, Domino's. We don't have Starbucks. We don't have Red Lobster. We don't have Taco Bell. Uh, Taco Bell is owned by Pepsi. Yeah. I think it's owned by Pepsi. Is that right? Yeah. At least so. I think so. Yeah. So the one that you're saying is affiliated with Walmart is it starts with an A. Asta. A S D A. And it's a green. The letters are green. Uh, it's same color, exactly the same color oh. as Charlie's t shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Look at the windows. Oh, this is a wide road for you. This is a big road for us. Yes. We get a bit frightened of this one. You're a super highway. <laughs> and this is our super highway, yes. Yeah. But Sam is handling it very well. He's very good. Yeah. He's scared to death, I can tell. <laughs> Are you <laughs> Bob? <laughs> He's holding his breath. Very good for a 23 year old. <laughs> He's squeezing the black juice out of that steering wheel. <laughs> So we're going to make a descent into Belfast now, okay? Belfast is surrounded by hills. We're built in the bottom of a basin. And you can be anywhere in Belfast fundamentally and look around and see hills. And if you've got really good eyesight, and if it's a day like a bit, a bit brighter than today, you can sometimes see the cows and the sheep on the hills. 
and we feel that we're terribly cosmopolitan in Belfast, you know, it's got this real juxtaposition. There's many, many good restaurants in the centre of Belfast now as well, and you can be in the centre of Belfast feeling, you know, really like with it, yeah. and uh, then you can look up and you can see the cows and the sheep <laughs> on the fields. There's not many capital cities give you that sort of juxtaposition. So those hills on the other side of Belfast, they look as if they're miles and miles away. They're really only about five miles. And guys, if you ever come back to Northern Ireland again, you, you should try some of our, some more of our lovely cuisine. Yes. We had Anne Kewen. But uh, Irish stew, of course, is a staple dish here. That's potatoes, beef, um, uh, carrots, and onions with salt and pepper. Make up a big, big pot of that, and that'll be a nice hearty meal for you for a number of days. But our signature dish, which sounds very posh when I say signature dish, the most famous dish here in Northern Ireland would be the Ulster Fry. Remember I told you that this part of Ireland is called Ulster? Yeah. So the Ulster fry would be two fried sausages, two fried eggs, two fried pieces of bacon, some...